strong tower for you see we like to wish everyone a happy Halloween and fall season. Be the mountains where I 
<laughs> this is pretty good. We'll show them some love. Well, good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, man. This is a feisty, ready-to-go group. Yes. Amen. Well, it's good you're here. Just uh, remind you a couple of things. Trunk or treat today, 4 o'clock up at the park. If you've got candy, uh, please uh, have it here to the church by noon today if you can. If otherwise, just bring it to the park and that, that'll work. But uh, we would encourage you to bring that. But if you have hot dogs, we would like to bring those here by noon today because uh, we don't want to give uncooked hot dogs out to the kids. <laughs> but there's some adults that will eat them that way. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't like them that way. But I uh, want to remind you about that. Uh, Consecration Sunday last week, uh, we collected cards. Just want to remind you, uh, we're still collecting those cards. Uh, if you didn't get one last week, if you weren't here last week, uh, be sure to get a card from the ushers. They've got those. Uh, and if you've got questions on it, see me or Alana uh, or Lawrence. I don't know if Lawrence is here this service. He might be here for the second service. But uh, if you've got questions, just see Alana or me. We'll answer those questions for you on what those are about and how we're doing that. Uh, let me think here. Anything else? Uh, I am excited about Halloween. Are you? Yes. Yeah, I'm kinda, I kind of like doing it. My socks are excited. Today I'm talking about masks. So I actually have got Yoda socks on underneath Frankenstein mask. <laughs> so there you go. Welcome your neighbor. I think you got some music coming here. Awesome. Welcome your neighbor this morning. Greet him in the name of Jesus. Thank you. 
straight out. I'm not Carla King, but I do want you to know <laughs> that uh, Carla is arranging our annual shoebox Christmas donations, and and uh, I know that November 11th looks like a really early date, but because of the way the holiday and Thanksgiving fell, and because of the postage necessary and the packing necessary and getting them to the countries where they are going to be used, November 11th is going to be shoebox Sunday. So bring your stuff for the shoeboxes. There's a flyer in your in your uh, bulletin. One of the greatest privileges so far. Yes. Hey, there I am. Yes. In my neighbor. <laughs> one of the greatest privileges I have had so far this year, I think, is today. Um, we have a big group of fourth and fifth graders who are widely talented, um, varied in personality, and all seekers, good question askers. We decided they all should get a copy of the Action Bible. And they are um, ably taught by Terry German and Denise Hayes, whom I would like to have come up so they can present the kids their Bibles and then Pastor Brad will pray with them. Can all the fourth and fifth graders, fourth and fifth graders, come to stand, please? Pastor, we have a green screen in the back where we are going to be taking their pictures to commemorate this occasion with a background that we can, can, uh, he can, he has a digital version of this Bible so he can project the things in the back. What have they done to the Bible? I know what, what have they done to the Bible? In case you are a person who wants to read the King James or New International Version with the, with the kids, at the, at the front, look in the front of your Bibles here. We've got a page with a note and a page telling where and when they got it, and then it begins. But there's an index that gives the verses from the traditional Bible 
that the that the comic book version, for lack of the graphic version, is based on. So you can follow along and, and maybe you can steal this and read it as well. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we're going to pray. Okay. All right. Come down here. Would you guys join me in prayer? If you want, if you feel comfortable, just extend your hands forward as we. Uh, we just ask God's blessing upon these young folks. So let us pray. Father, we thank you uh, for your word. For your word is alive, it is authentic, it is active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is meant to pierce our lives and to be a, a tool in which we learn from that will defend us in times of trouble, that will comfort us, in times of sorrow that will guide us in, in times of confusion and it will give us peace beyond understanding. And so Father we ask that as the word is read into our lives, as we read, read the word, as we receive that, may we impart the word as well through our lives and through our actions. May we live out what you have called us to live, to live for you Jesus, for you are the word, you are the living word. And you bring us hope and bring us life. And we pray as we learn, may we glorify you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bless you with these Bibles. All right, thank you. together in prayer and praise to the Lord. Let us uh, uh, remember those that are in need of prayer. There's a number of folks uh, that uh, continue to need prayer, and I encourage you to keep that in your, uh, in your hearts and your minds through our prayer list, and uh, just pack that up someplace and just encourage you to pray daily for those needs and those concerns. Uh, also, we have much to celebrate, much to thank God about. How about the Elmwood Cross Country? Yesterday, congratulations to the boys. And I th how did the girls do? The girls did okay, or do we know yet? No, the girls didn't do good. <laughs> All right, but the boys are going to state. All right, let's give them some love. <laughs> Maybe next year, next year. That's right. It's going to be awesome. So congratulations to them. Uh, congratulations uh, to Julie and Mark Davis now, as they were married right here. <laughs> yesterday. That was pretty awesome. So congratulations to the Ladd family. Also need to uh, continue to keep uh, our nation in prayer right now. A lot going on, especially uh, there in uh, Pennsylvania uh, with the shooting at the synagogue yesterday. And it's just uh, uh, such a tragic thing right now. And we need to keep those families and those who have lost loved ones in that community in our prayers. Amen. All right. Who else do we want to remember in prayer today? Is there anyone else we'd like to continue and lift up? You know, we want to keep Ruth Bollinger in our prayers. She is uh, uh, recovering. She was out walking around yesterday at the wedding. That was amazing. She just had, a, had knee surgery less than two weeks ago. So that's just amazing to me. So she's a pretty tough lady. Any other prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. My family. Family, all right, thank you. <coughs> we'll keep your family in our prayers. All right. Well, let us bow our heads in prayer. Well, Holy Father, we come into your presence. We come with singing and with thanksgiving. We come with joy and we lift our hearts to you because you are God. You are good to us. You are compassionate and slow to anger, and you abound with love that is everlasting. And so we bring our prayers to you. As we turn to you, we turn also our concerns over to you and our heartaches and our sorrows. 
pray for those that are hurting, those that need healing right now. We pray for those that need that healing. We pray for families that are mourning and grieving over the loss of loved ones. In the midst of this tragedy and this uh, attack upon the synagogue, we ask your directing hand to be with those families. We ask your comfort, Almighty God, to give them peace, to help them to sort through the questions and to help them to find your consolation in their lives, to support them and to lift them up. May our prayers undergird all that what you are doing as well and give them courage and strength. We pray for those in our community and that need healing as well. We pray for those that are suffering with infections. We pray for those that are suffering with, with illness. We pray for those that are alone and afraid. Those who may even be separated from their families right now. We pray for them. We pray that your great and guiding hand will help all these situations. We celebrate what the, the boys across country has accomplished. We pray for state that is coming and for a good competition that you would bring great joy through it all. Lord, we look to you again for our nation and for our world, for families, for individuals, and for the peace that will bring hope to our lives through Jesus. We offer our prayers to you in his holy name as we pray together in the manner in which you have taught us how to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us open our hearts as we hear the word of God. Good morning. Today's reading from Genesis chapter 3, the early days of humankind. Verses 6 through 11 from the New International Version. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. <coughs> then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. I think if you look around right now, it's pretty obvious fall has arrived. Am I right? You look at the trees uh, on the way to the uh, country club yesterday for the reception. Uh, I took uh, a little different route just to enjoy the drive and uh, enjoy all the trees, and they were looking pretty beautiful. And I think it, it's pretty obvious fall is here just by the, the, the feel of the air and the weather, the way the weather is, and 
sights and the trees, the scenic drive is over. Amen. <laughs> For a lot of communities, that is a big amen, but it's a great thing. Uh, high school football pretty much has come to an end. And, uh, yeah, go Trojan. It would be awesome. Next year, they're going to get it all the way. Not a prophecy. It's a prayer. <laughs> I think they will do it. And Halloween is just around the corner. And it is almost there. Now, I want to tell you, uh, I'm, last year I went to a Halloween party and I dressed up for it, you know, and I went to it. And I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I'm going to do that again this year because uh, I got beat up pretty bad last year. And I guess in hindsight, I probably went, shouldn't have went to the party dressed as a pinata. So, <laughs> so I learned a lesson there. But speaking of dress up or dressing up, how about taking a little trip down memory lane for some of you, or some of you uh, are really into those retro costumes, a blast from the past. How many of you remember these kind of hot costumes like we have here? Uh, they, were, they were pretty common. Uh, you could buy them just about anywhere. I remember going to Kmart <laughs> to get mine. We didn't have Walmart in California. Uh, they came just like this. They came in a box. Uh, basically, there was a little cellophane window in the front so you could see the mask and uh, uh, the costume was inside. They were usually really, really, really cheap. Very flimsy costumes. Uh, they didn't have much to them. I kind of thought, you know, this is really old photo, but I think it's kind of like prophetic because Yoda was really good friends with, the, with Chewbacca. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder if George Lucas saw this picture and got the idea, oh, I think they should be friends. <laughs> but uh, yeah, remember those? And uh, like I said, the costumes were really cheap, flimsy, plastic. I don't think they were meant to be wore more than once. Uh, maybe not at least two Halloweens. If, if you were like my mom, my mom could make anything last. And so she would carefully fold those costumes back up, put them back in the box and say, we'll have it for next year. Well. I really didn't want to go with the same characters I went from the year before. Everybody already saw it. But you know, the thing is, kids didn't really worry about it too much because they all had the same costume. But as time went by, the demand for better costumes came along. But the thing that set these apart was, was the mask. You knew who that person was trying to pretend to be or portray because of the mask. The mask was the key element that set the entire costume apart. That was the most important part of the costume. It was the mask. With the mask, you became that character you were pretending to be. You didn't have to have any kind of external uh, voices. You didn't have to use any kind of special effects or anything. People just knew you were that person because of the mask and what that mask said. The mask told everybody who you were. And that's what we're going to look today, look at today, is masks and how those are still a part of our lives. Now, we may not be dressing up for Halloween this year. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But I strongly believe in life many people wear masks, including myself. We're going to look at that here. Now, not every mask is for fun. Criminals wear masks. We know bandits wear masks. We see those old Western movies. They put the bandana up around to hide their, uh, disguise their, uh, their features of their face so nobody can recognize them. Uh, a lot of them wear ski masks, you know, to hide that. You see movies, uh, people wear masks because they don't want to be seen. And it's not always good what they're trying to, why they're trying to hide their identity. It's not always good that way. Basically, we know that a mask is something that is made to shield. Now, there are some good masks. There's face masks that uh, you know, catchers wear in baseball. There's uh, masks that people wear when they weld. That's important. You don't want to weld without a mask. I wouldn't recommend trying it. I, I tried it once. Uh, wasn't good. <laughs> it didn't end good. But the metaphorical masks that are a part of our lives can be dangerous. There is the metaphorical mask, the mask of professionalism we wear when our boss or our supervisor is around. We're a different person when we're at work or when we're in a place where we're uh, employed or where we're in, involved with something. There's a, the mask of innocence that children wear 
you know, when they walk into the into the schoolroom and they walk up to the teacher and they go, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> You know, or, or I lost it, or on the way here, there was a great puff of wind and it blew all my papers away. And the teachers catch on to that. They see through that mask that child is wear, wearing. There's the metaphorical mask of uh, in marriages that as one spouse pretends to be something else or hides something else. There's that mask that can be there. And then there's the problem that we all face. There is a problem that we all face. And that is the real problem for us today. Is a lot of folks wear a mask of some sort in their lives. Maybe it's a mask that says, I'm okay, when I'm really not. Maybe it's a mask that says, you know, I, everything's good inside, and I'm all happy, and everything's joyful, but yet they're not. Mask that says, I'm good, and they're not. The most dangerous part of all is we not only wear that mask in front of our friends, in front of our families, but we wear that mask in front of God. Now, it's not that God can't see through that mask, but the question is, why are we trying to hide something from God? Sometimes we wear a mask for so long that we forget who we really are. We become that other person that we're pretending to be. <coughs> and it's not helping. It's not helping our lives or the lives of those around us. And the big problem is it affects us in more ways than one. It affects our homes. It affects our families, it affects our communities, it affects the church. And it's easy to forget that we are not alone wearing masks. We look at the person sitting next to us, at one point or at some point, or even right now, we're wearing a mask, trying to disguise something. It's a huge problem. Now, we are not the first person or people to wrestle with this problem. So that's a big relief, amen? We're not alone in this. This is not a new phenomenon that just started. This is not something that is just recently being discovered. This has been going on since the creation, or more so, the fall of man. Adam and Eve were in a desperate situation. They both made a huge mistake. They both knew they did the wrong thing. And from that decision, people have been wearing masks. Now, this today, this scripture heading, I would probably put more to the title, the first episode of Naked and Afraid. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think this was that, actually the first episode of that. And so the first mask that was worn by Adam and Eve right after their fall was the mask of fear. It says here in the scripture today, it says, The man and the wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking through the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid among the trees in the garden, but the Lord called out to the man. He says, Where are you? Where are you at? And the man answered him from the bushes, terrified. He said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid. Behind the mask of fear, he hid. He was trying to hide himself from God. He said, I was naked, so I hid. Now, we all have something we fear. You know, you all know it's spiders with me. <laughs> There's an individual in the room who will remain nameless that hides plastic spiders in my office. <laughs> So if I wind up as a client of Oaks Hines, it's because of that. <laughs> but we all are afraid of something. We put on a mask trying to, trying to disguise that maybe. Oh, I'm tough and brave over this, but yet deep down inside we are scared to death. Maybe it's the fear of failure. Maybe it's the fear of, of 
doubt. Maybe it's the fear of failing something in their lives. We all have something that makes us afraid. Second mask that came into existence was the mask of shame. Now we all understand what shame is. We make a mistake, we feel ashamed, don't we? You know, oh, why did I do that? Well, I'm a knucklehead or whatever. And, or, you know, we feel remorse from that. But then if it's something really bad, we feel ashamed of ourselves. Why did I ever do this? I should never have done that. <coughs> and Adam and Eve, the thing is for them, they didn't know what shame was until after they ate the fruit. It wasn't before. Isn't it amazing the same thing for us? We don't feel ashamed for something we haven't done. <laughs> Usually after. And maybe we're afraid of something we should have done or could have done, maybe in a good way, but we don't feel the same shame as when we commit the act. And the third mask that came into existence was the mask of denial. Now this is the part of the scripture that, that Dory didn't read, but I'm going to give you that part there, and I think we all know it. So God asked him, he said, you know, who told you you were naked, and who told you, did you eat of the fruit of the tree that I told you did not eat of? And here's what it says in verse 12. It says, the man said, the woman you put here with me in the garden, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman, in turn, said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So as soon as Adam and Eve were found out, the blame game began. <laughs> you all know that? God saying, who told you you were naked? Who had been going in? That woman you put in the garden with me, it's her fault. <laughs> she did it. And the woman's over the whoa. It was the serpent. That serpent you put in the garden with God, you should never have put that serpent in the garden. It's his fault. And they're both blaming, you know, blaming each other. And you've all seen the kids fight. <laughs> and they're all both back and forth bantering. Like, well, she did it, he did it, she did it, he did it. He touched me, she touched me, da 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 going on. And God's probably thinking to himself, why didn't I stop after I made the elephants? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Blame game. We might be able to call it a mask of blame. I don't know. If maybe it's that. But Eve immediately put the same mask on that Adam did. Did you catch that? Adam put on that mask and said it's her fault. And Eve put on that same mask. It's his fault or their fault. It's that. It's the servant's fault. Did you notice nobody took ownership of it? And that's often what a mask will do. It's a mask of denial. And I'm not talking about the one in Egypt. Think about that one. And from that point forward, masks have continued to be a part of our lives. We all have them. And right now, scores of people are hiding behind masks when they even come to church. Now, if I had a camera out in the parking lot and had microphones out there, or maybe in your car, and you all don't want that. I know there's families that show up to church Sunday morning, they're driving in, and it's, <coughs> anybody else? No, put your hand up, because you'll admit it. But they're all arguing, but the, by the time you hit that door, it's a happy face on. We've got it all together. We're happy. We're good. We're not like those crazy people in the parking lot. We all wear that mask. I'll put on some mask. I've got it together. I've got the. I got my act together. I'm a strong Christian. I'm this. I'm that. And the thing is, we don't feel comfortable with our true selves because it scares us. Because we're afraid somebody's going to see us for who we really are. Maybe somebody that doesn't have their act together. Maybe it's somebody that 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 hardly has ever picked up this book. And read it. Maybe it's somebody that, you know, I don't pray as often as I should, or I don't I don't read my Bible as often as I should, or I don't have it all together. And my kids drive me crazy at home and, and I I don't got it together. 
and I'm going to go to church, and I, I've got to be in a place where everybody's got it together. You want to know a little secret? We all wear masks. <laughs> We're all hiding behind that same mask as well. People pretend to be more spiritual, more put together, and more mature in their faith than they really are. And personally, we fear that if anyone knew us as we really are, they would think less of us. That's the thing we're afraid of. We won't be as popular. History proves that we are not the first ones to deal with this. So the big problem is, can others see through that mask that you are wearing? Maybe yes, maybe no. Usually no, because we wear it so well. But the thing is, Jesus can. Jesus can see through that mask you've got on. And the thing about masks is that they are never, they will never bring us closer to who we were created to be. They never will. Masks always make shallow of what God intended for us to do, to become. They hinder us from becoming who we were created to be. So if we wear masks, even people who go to church, then what is the answer we need to hear today? And I've got three minutes to tell you. <laughs> All right? <coughs> Jesus helps us with the answer. The first thing we need to realize that it is not everybody, it's not everybody that wears masks. Or it's, 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 well, I need to say it right. Everybody wears masks, but it is not for us to judge that person. Because we're wearing one ourselves. Jesus put it this way. He said, before you point out the speck in your brother's eye, take the log out of yours. Yes. Okay? Before the speck can be or revealed in your brother's life or sister's life, then take yours out and show everyone. So before we judge others that are wearing masks, we need to not judge. And we need to trust. Okay, amen on that? Know your life. You know your life the best. You can fill in the blank. Adam and Eve believed the lie that Satan could, uh, that, that told them that they could be far more than God. Well, the thing is, we believe the lie that we can be better with masks than without. That's a lie. God wants you to be the best you you can be, and that's the real you, not the hidden you, the real you. And that's what Satan tries to do in our lives. He tries to convince us that we are going to be far better off, more accepted, more loved, more welcome with that mask on than without it. Because Satan says, you don't want the world to see the real you. You're a screw up. You don't want the world to see the real you because you're not as intelligent and educated as the rest of them. You make mistakes. You have flaws. That's what Satan wants you to believe. The thing is, God wants you to believe this. I love you the way you are. I accept you the way you are. Satan definitely does not want you talking to God about what is going on in your life. So Satan tempts you to pull that mask over your face. So I ask you this question. Where does Satan tempt you to put that mask on your face? Where does Satan tempt you to be less than who you are? Where is he tempting you to do that? So the thing I would want us to encourage you about is to dream and to think of what if and the possibilities. What if the mask you were wearing was a thing of the past in your life? What if that mask was something that was in the past for you? How would your friendships be different? How would your relationships with your family be different? How would your marriage be different? How would your relationship with God be different? Our lives only improve when we are willing to take chances and the first and most difficult risk we can take is to be honest with God and honest with ourselves. That is the most challenging thing is and real freedom is found when we are honest and open. 
When we stand in front of that mirror and we take that mask off and that we say, God, I'm only as good as you have made me. And that is the best. I am the best because this is the way you have made me. This is the way, this is the person you love. And if no one else loves me for that, that's okay. You love me regardless. I wouldn't say I have a one-size-fits-all mask removal strategy for you, but here's what uh, works for me. The shame that Adam and Eve felt towards God was real and frightening. And it was so real and frightening because they understood a fear that we don't understand. But the world does. But we as Christians don't. The fear that we can understand is in the light of the advocate, Jesus Christ. Adam and Eve didn't have anybody to stand up for them when they made their failure, right? They were on their own. You have an advocate. You have Jesus Christ who will stand with you and say, yeah, I know they goofed up. The Father, you love them, I love them, and they're okay, and God says, amen. So why are you hiding? If you have an advocate that loves you the way you are, why are you hiding? We have an advocate, and he sees the real us. He sees the real person. You see, when Jesus was sad, he cried. It's okay to cry. Jesus shows us it's okay. When Jesus was happy, he laughed and he smiled. He had a good time. When Jesus was scared, he prayed. When Jesus needed others, he asked friends for help. And when Jesus saw people who needed a friend, he hung out with them. He didn't put on any mask. He didn't go around saying things were okay when they weren't. He shows us to be authentic and to be real. You see, Jesus never wore a mask and he tells us to do the same thing. So, it is not who you are pretending to be that matters in life, but what God can do with the real you that matters. What can God do with you? It's not who you are. Let's say this together. It is not who you are pretending to be that matters in life, but what God can do with the real you that matters. You see, that's the plan. The Lord is calling you today to remove your mask, to seek the Lord to reveal that. And inside your bulletins, you've got some points there, little notes there. I uh, encourage you to take those home, read them, <coughs> fill them out, make notes, put your laundry list on it. That's okay. But use that. The thing is, here it is, Isaiah 35, 4. Here's what the Word of God, let's, let this Word settle on your heart today. Say to those with fearful hearts, anybody got any fearful hearts? I got some fearful hearts in my life. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies, amen? He is coming to save you. It is not who you are pretending to be that matters in life, but who, what God can do with the real you. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Well, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have given us hope through your word. Even though we may mask ourselves from the realities in life, we may mask ourselves from our family and from our friends, we may even mask, mask ourselves from you, or even ourselves. Help us to trust and to know that you love us as we are. You've created us so uniquely that we would honor you and glorify you with everything we say and do. May that be true of our lives now. Help us to remove the mask and be honest with ourselves as we are honest with you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. If our ushers will come, let us collect our offering. If you have your uh, commitment cards for the Consecration Sunday, and this again is for, for members of the congregation, uh, if you have those, 
uh, concept, those cards for that. We want to fill those, you know, turn those in today. Please put those in the offering plate. Let us give as God has given to us.
help others know the hope of Christ. But when they can't see who we are, then we don't show them Christ. It is Christ whom we serve, it is Christ whom we love, and it is Christ whom we share. So, <laughs> let's go on that mission, amen? <laughs> go in peace.